and then we'll write it up on the board. In the next sentence, what are the uh, two conversion factors that you can generate from that? Okay. Um, uh, one point one, sorry, one point one, sorry. Oh, uh, I mean, uh, I at this one. Uh, an ideal chlorine level. Okay, so the, in the next one, we had one ppm of chlorine by math. And so that was one gram of chlorine per uh, million grams of water. So we just have to write it all out. This million gram. Uh, this is actually cool water. It's not pure water. Uh, this is another mixture. So it's not going to be pure. And so, in every million grams of cool water, there should be a, a one gram of chlorine. And so, what this does is this goes from um, grams of pure chlorine to grams of cool water. And so this is why in the advanced problems, uh, we have to be very careful about how we label. There are actually two labels here, the mass grams and what it is here. And we need to do this. In Chem 4, the problem with Chem 4 is you don't need to do it. <coughs> and so by the time you get to Chem 1A, you don't do it. And, and then you struggle on problems like this, um, basically, which, which can be very difficult. Or uh, if I had a million grams of pool water, then um, I would need one gram of pure chlorine. And so this goes from grams of cool water to grams of pure chlorine. Okay, let's go on to the next, um, the next one. The next one, uh, what do you have? The uh, next one is density, but you, do you see this is not correctly labeled for us? This labeling is not enough, and a lot of people will just leave the label as is. To leave the label as is is too easy to make mistakes because you have to track everything in your head. And so let's rewrite that. How would you rewrite that? And so density is either given a, um, a lowercase d or uppercase d. And so the density of the, this is going to be the density of the what? Chlorine solution? The density of the chlorine solution is 1.10 grams per milliliter. Okay, there are different ways that we could label this. Um, one way we could label this is like this. We could say that there is 1.10 grams per milliliter, and this is only valid. Is this valid for pool water? No. No. Yeah, this is only valid for the chlorinating solution. So we could put that outside here like this. But since this is a Chem 4, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you just to rewrite it. Um, we're going to rewrite this as what? A chlorine solution per milliliter. Uh, per milliliter of what? Yeah, chlorine solution, per milliliter of chlorine solution. And so what does this accomplish? Well, this takes <coughs> us from milliliters of chlorine solution to grams of chlorine solution. And so let's say I had um, 10 milliliters of chlorinating solution. I want to know how much that weighs. Well, it's going to weigh more than 10 grams. It's going to weigh 10.1 grams. And so, um, or alternatively, could do a flip it over and uh, one is not normally written here but it would be one milliliter uh, chlorinating solution per 1.10 grams of chlorinating solution and so this one just takes me from milliliters of chlorinating solution to grams of chlorinating solution Except, what, what am I doing with the sig figs here? How many sig figs are there in this one, the top? How many 
sig figs? Infinite, yeah. How many sig figs here? Three. So this would be a three sig fig conversion factor. All right. Okay, what's the next one here? The next one would be we're going to assume a density <coughs> for the pool water uh, 1.00 so when we look at the um, pool water, you know, pool water is 1.00 grams per milliliter. You know what that tells me? That tells me that that's very close to what? 1.00 grams per milliliter is very close to pure water. Pure water. And so it tells me that the, um, that the whatever is in there, you know, the pool chemicals are a fairly low concentration. If they're a high concentration, increase the math. You still would probably wouldn't want to drink it, you know. Would you call it pure? If you, if you had a density of this for the cool water, would you say, hey, that's the same density as pure water. Uh, that's drinkable. Would you say that? No. Uh, because uh, even small quantities of chemicals can be very harmful, like chlorine. So it just be all right, so how are we going to write this? The way we're going to write this is 1.00 grams of cool water um, per milliliter of cool water. And so this one would convert from milliliters of cool water to grams of cool water. And then um, if we flip it over, we get one milliliter of cool. I know it's a bit of a pain to write this all out, but it's going to save you in the long run. 1.00 grams of cool water. So this is going to go from grams of cool water to milliliters of cool water. Okay. I guess that's it. And then um, here's the question. What volume of chlorine solution in liters is required to produce chlorine level of 1 ppm in 18,000 gallon swimming pool. Um, I have a question about when you go from milliliters to grams of this Uh huh. So if you're going to one from the other, from one to the other, what you're going to will be the denominator, right? Well, um, I'm just doing it in the standard. Uh, not always. But this is the standard because whatever we're given, we're given as a numerator. But sometimes we have to convert the denominator. And so um, if I'm going from grams to milliliters, let's say the density of um, water is 1.00 grams per milliliter. And I want to figure out how many um, pounds per gallon that is. Then this is a different scenario here because um, I have to flip, convert everything because I have to look at what I'm trying to cancel out. And so the, the grams is no problem. And so what we're going to do is on the top, we'll get rid of the grams. And so on the top, we know that there's going to be 450, what was it, 453.6? grams per pound. So one pound is 453.6 grams. Or about 454 grams. And so here the grams cancel. However, to cancel out the milliliters, I'll need to put the milliliters in the numerator here. And so I have to invert everything. Well, what I've been doing is I've, I've been just canceling out the denominator all these, but some sometimes you'll have to cancel it out. So whatever you're going to is the numerator? I'm sorry? Whatever you're going to is the Yeah, it's going to the numerator. Right yeah. But here, it's, it's just the opposite. What, what I want to do is I want to replace milliliters in the denominator, and so I'm going to have to invert my thinking here. So, uh, milliliters to gallons is going to be um, like this. One milliliter is a thousand milliliters. I mean, a, one thousand milliliters is a liter. And then there are um, 3.875 liters per gallon. And so, you know, I just got to make sure the dimensions cancel out. Milliliters cancels, liters cancels. That leaves me with gallons in the denominator, pounds in the numerator, pounds per gallon. And so sometimes I'll have to flip it to, to get it to work. But 
most of the time, this, this is okay. So what we're after is the volume of chlorine solution. So we want the number of liters of chlorine solution. That's what we want. But what are we given here? Um, we're given 18,000 gallons of, of what? Cool water. Cool water. 18,000 gallons of cool water. And it's got to be at 1 ppm. 1 ppm is just uh, is going to be one of our conversion factors. And so the strategy here is to, um, you know, we have two choices. We can try to map this out, you know. Um, for example, if, if we try to map this out, we might go from gallons of cool water to liters of cool water. So cool water doesn't change. From liters of cool water to milliliters of cool water. And then I think back, do I have something that goes milliliters of cool water to something? Yeah, milliliters of cool water to grams of cool water. And then when I have grams of cool water, then is there something, take a look at the conversion factors, is there something that takes us from grams of cool water to something else? There is, what can we relate grams of cool water to? Grams of? Not chlorine solution. Grams of. Just look look at what you have written down. Just take a moment and look at what you have written down. It's not grams of chlorine solution. Grams of chlorine. Pure chlorine, right? And so we'll go to grams of pure chlorine. In fact, I'm going to emphasize that because we have two chlorines. We have the chlorine. We have actually we have three chlorine mix. Three chlorines. What are they? Pure chlorine. What else? Chlorinating solution and pool water. All three of those have chlorine associated with those. So we have to keep track of which one we're talking about. Otherwise, we're going to get mixed up. And so we're going to go to grams of pure chlorine. From grams of pure chlorine, where can we go? To next. Oh, now we, we can go to grams of chlorinating solution. From grams of chlorinating solution, where can we go? To milliliters of chlorinating solution. And from milliliters of chlorinating solution, well, we can just go to liters of chlorinating solution. Then we're done. That's, that's, we could map it out like this, you know, if we, if we figure out all our conversion factors first. But sometimes we don't do that. You know, um, oftentimes I won't do this, you know, I won't figure out. I'll just start, you know, and um, this is it. If you have a map, that's great. You'll probably go faster, but you don't need a map. You could just um, do trial and error until you figure it out. Trial and error is fine. This is how most people solve dimensional analysis. They solve it by trial and error. You know, um, if you make a mistake, it's no big deal. You, know, you just back up and start over again. So. So what I would do here is, this is normally what I do, is I go 18,000, I, I don't even do this map out because it takes me more time to think this through. I do it just on the fly. As we go along, I'll just figure it out. So rather than mapping it out like this, we just use dimensional analysis, 18,000 gallons of cool water. And then I look for something. I'd like to cancel out gallons, or better yet, I'd like to cancel out gallons of cool water. If I have nothing that cancels out gallons of cool water, I'll just cancel out the gallons. And so I have gallons, of, there's nothing. You remember seeing anything that relates gallons of cool water to anything else? No. And so what I'll do is I'll just get rid of the gallons. And so here we said, well, one, we just can go to liters, basically, 3.785 liters. And so the, just only the gallons cancel, not the gallons of cool water. Now I have liters of cool water. Is there something that directly takes us from liters of cool water to something else? No. There is something that takes us from milliliters of cool water, right? Milliliters, we can go. But liters, we can't. And so here, I'm, I'm just going to get rid of the liters and I replace that with milliliters. And so the pool water, we aren't going to cancel out just yet. So liters cancel out here. That leaves us with milliliters of cool water. And 
So the milliliters of the water, is there something that does it? Yeah, there is. The density there, that is, um, there's 1.00 grams of cool water for every milliliter, one milliliter of cool water. Oh yeah, this is backwards. This is not going to cancel. This is going to give me milliliters squared, which is not right. So let's rewrite it. 1.00 grams of cool water per um, milliliter of cool water. And so now um, the cool water does cancel out. Well, not really. I mean, we still have cool water here, but this one's specific for cool water. These ones are not specific for cool water. These are for anything. Yeah. And so this is why I wrote it out there. Now I have 1.00 grams of cool water. So I'm either looking to convert grams into something else, like milligrams or micrograms, or I get rid of grams of cool water. And so um, the best would be to get rid of grams of cool water. So what can we go? Where can we go from grams of cool water? So we look back. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have actually two choices here. Do you see our two choices? Um, what the, the, the two choices are, I can go from, um, oh, actually, I only have one choice. Right? And so I have to go to this. I have to go to one gram of pure chlorine for every million grams of cool water. Do you see that? So that's the ratio I need. I don't know how many grams I have, but this is the correct ratio. And so grams of cool water cancel. Now the cool water is out of there and I'm left with pure chlorine. So if I stop here, this is the number of grams of pure chlorine I need. But I don't have pure chlorine. If I, if I had pure chlorine, I'd just stop here and dump that into the pool. Instead, I have to um, Yeah. I have to do this. And that is, uh, what am I going to use here? I need to get rid of grams or grams of chlorine. Well, we can get ground, rid of grams of chlorine by this. What is it? Seven grams of pure chlorine for every 100 grams of chlorinating solution. Okay, now I no longer have pure chlorine, I just have this mixture. And this, in this mixture, for every 100 grams of this mixture, I have seven grams of pure chlorine, so I'll need more grams. Okay. All right, now I need to get rid of grams of chlorine solution. Grams of chlorine solution here would be the best. Is there something that will get rid of that? That leaves us with milliliters of chlorine solution. And then here, we don't want milliliters, we want liters. liters. So this one's not specific for chlorine solution. So milliliters cancels. That leaves us with liters of chlorine solution. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So I would do 18,000 times 3.785 times 1,000, actually times 1,000 divided by 1,000. Times that. Um, times 100 here. Let's do times. Divided by 1 million. Divided by seven, divided by 1.1. So usually what I do is I write out the answer with more digits than I'm allowed. So I might write like 0.8848. And 
Now that's way more digits than I'm allowed, right? And this would be chlorinating solution. And then I, I gotta look at how many sig figs am I allowed? And so this is multiplication and division. What's the rule for multiplication and division? Smallest Yeah, smallest. So which one has the smallest? Three. No. Mistake. What did you get? So, what I was doing is multiplying all the numerators and then putting it over all the denominators. Okay, I, I, this is what I do. I just go in line. So, the, I'll show you how I punch this out in the calculator. Although, I'm not used to this particular calculator, but it's, it, I just do 18,000 times 3.785. Well, times one is the same. Divided by a million. So, I just do divided by a million. times 100 divided by 7 divided by 1.1 equals 0 .884. 884. What did you get? Um, actually, I already know the answer for this one because this is my usual example. But yeah, check it because of this. Maybe one of these, you know. Yeah, I mean there. Did you do this? Well, you got a bigger number than me, so. I think I yeah. 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 But just make sure to double check because you definitely want to make sure you're getting this. It is point. The correct answer is point eight eight four. Uh huh. You got 0 .885. 0 .885, that's odd. Um, did you use the same ones I used? Yeah. The same numbers? But I did three sig figs. Oh, no, no. Actually, we don't know how many sig figs. I'm not going to round it yet. In the calculator, what did you get? 0 .884, and then you rounded it? 0 .884. Yeah. Then you're right. If you round it to three sig figs, it would be 0 .885. But we don't round it yet. We first... Um, this is uh, the answer before rounding. I carry extra digits. And then let's round it to the correct number of sig figs. How many sig figs are we allowed? It's not three. We're not allowed three sig figs. Well, let's look. How many sig figs in this one? Two. This one could either be two or infinite. Two, five, or infinite. <coughs> And the reason I like to think of it as infinite because, you know, this hypothetical, I don't think they actually measured. They're just saying four and 18,000. So if you built an 18,000 gallon pool, how much? And so we might as well say, if this pool were exactly 18,000 gallons, approximately how much chlorinating solution do you need? And so I would do two, five, or infinite. I do infinite for this. Because then we have it fixed. We don't want to insert you there because that's just going to make it more confusing. How many sig figs here? Four. Yeah, that's correct. How many here? Infinite. Infinite. How many here? No, three. Three, right? The water is not, um, especially pool water. <coughs> this one? one? Well, it depends. You know, is it depends if this is the um, regulation. Is the regulation one ppm? An ideal. It's an ideal. So we could say it's infinite or one, one you know, just about. How about this one? I mean one. This would be one. This is one sig fig because, you know, somebody's got to make that chlorinating solution. And if it's only one sig fig, an unscrupulous company might go 6.5, you know, 6.5% because they'll say, oh, that's close enough to it. 7%, so you're actually getting a watered down chlorinating solution. Does that make sense? But you can't hold them, I mean, it's correct because 
you know, they probably can make it very precisely, you know, at uh, 6.5%, which is called 7%. Uh-huh. Well, why can't we just do it infinitely? We assume the pool is infinite. Someone had to make the pool, so why wouldn't they make the pool? You know, the chlorinating solution? Um, okay, okay, because this is it. You know, let's say your pool was, uh, we need a, a the reason we make this one infinite is we need a reference point. Like, okay, so if, if we made the pool exactly 18,000, that's great because we don't want too many uncertainties. If we have too many things that are uncertain, then it, it mixes things up. So if you're saying, well, if we made this approximate, well, what would it vary from? It would vary from 17,500 to 18,400 gallons, which is a huge variation, which, is, which means that this number is going to go over a wide range. Well, if it's 17,500, you want to use this much. If it's 18,400, you want to use more, or quite a bit more maybe, you know, because that's, a, that's not a small change in volume, you know, that's a pretty big, big change in volume there. And so what we like to do is keep this fixed and then put the uncertainty here. This one makes more sense for, for the uncertainty because when you purchase um, these, these solutions, you know, you don't know. You know, there, I, you, uh, I don't know if you heard, but uh, I saw this news um, article where uh, one pharmacy, um, the pharmacist is diluting down the medication, like a 10 to 1 dilution or something. It's not supposed to be a 10 to 1 dilution. It was supposed to be like a 1 to 1, but they're doing 10 to 1 so that they can increase their, their profits. Now, this is a commercial company that's making this chlorinating solution. At 7%, I don't trust them. You know, I'm sure they could hit it. I'm sure they could nail it right at 7%, but I'm sure they're always erring on the low side. Somebody always asks me um, about the absolute <coughs> value and the, and the error. You know, a lot of people use absolute, uh, we chemists don't normally, because if you're always seeing this on the low side, you know, you analyze their chlorinating solution, it's always coming out negative, meaning it's always less than what they're claiming it is, right? Then you know there's a problem. If it's random, let's say, if, if, you're, if, you, if you're buying this and you send out samples and it's random, some are higher, some are lower, fine. But if all of them are negative, right, then there's a problem. And so this is why we don't get rid of the absolute, I mean, this is why we don't use the absolute value signs. We need to know if there's a systematic thing happening. Okay. I know in physics they're going to make you put the absolute value sign around percent errors, but not in chemistry. Well, I, let me take that back. It depends on what type of chemistry you do. If you're an analytical chemist, you don't ever drop the negative sign. We want to know. Um, well, anyway, getting back to this, uh, th it just this one, yes. Or, or you could say it's exact. You don't trust. We could say it's exact. But the thing is, if you had an ex exactly an 18,000, how much of this chlorinating solution do you need to use? The, the situation here is this. If this were exact, then you, you'd use this amount, right? This amount. But if you don't trust this company, and this company might make it at 6.5%, that means you might have to add a little bit more to get it to the proper level. This is like the same thing with um, buying fuel. If you're buying, you know, they, they, they do these things. I'll, do, I'll get to your question in just a second. But they do these things where, okay, you don't want to run out of gas, right? But you don't want the extra weight. And so you got to get it right on the money. But then you have to worry about, you know, is, is what you're buying what really what you're buying? Could it have been diluted down, you know, in, with some kind of filler or et cetera, et cetera. And so this is why you got to think, if this were down to six and a half, then we're going to need a little more than this, you know? That's, that's the type of thing that goes in here. Or if this is truly random, then you know this is about the amount, but we'll need a little bit more, a little bit less, but there's potential we're gonna need a little bit more. Now, if it's crucial, let's say there's a, the brain-eating amoeba that you're worried about in the swimming pool. If you're worried about the brain-eating amoeba, you better make sure the chlorine level's right on, and, and so that, that deals with uncertainty in your chlorinating solution here. Not necessarily in the uncertainty here, because, I mean, you can, um, uh, always compensate for that by going higher or lower. So, um, but, you know, that's just my opinion. Uh, obviously, you can argue other, otherwise, and you, can, you could have good justification for any other way you want to do it. It's fine, you know? But we have to compensate for uncertainty somewhere, and I really don't think we... 
unless, you know, some chlorinating solutions might go 7.0, you know, 7.00, then you know more precisely what you're getting. You know, but if it's just marked 7%, then you really, that's really loose as far as the solutions go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, just as a general rule in your class then, so if it's a whole number percentage, then it's assumed to be a one sig fig or two sig fig, depending on the, the unit itself? Yeah. Okay, so right. it's never infinite in this class for the percentage? Um, uh, not unless it's a definition, okay. you know, by definition. Like uh, a, a definition might be the e EPA has um, has regulated it so that it's one ppm minimum. Then then you would say exactly you need exactly one ppm, you know that kind of thing. It's, of course, you can go over, but sometimes going over too high is damaging as well. You, know, you don't want to go too high. Okay, um, so it looks like we're only uh, up to one sig fig. Well, if it's one sig fig, then how many liters is it? 0.9 liters. The way, the way I read this is I don't want to hit exactly 0.9. I know it's about 0.9, give or take some, right? This is because the, this is just telling me it's uncertain, you know, so I have to be careful. <coughs> Maybe what I have to do is add it and then check it. Test it and see what my PPM is, um, and which is easy to do. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there's um. Are there any math majors here? <laughs> There's one um, complication to this. The, the one complication is, is this. And um, this goes back to our calculations, you know, how precise this is in, in chemistry. Now, is this really 18,000 gallons now? I called it exactly. Remember I said exactly 18,000 gallons? You know, Okay, so I, I said, okay, this is going to be exactly 18,000 gallon, and then we're going to add some of this chlorinating solution, but it's no longer 18,000 gallons. Do you know what the pool volume is now? 18,000.9. Yeah, 18,000 gallons plus 0.8 liters, which is about a quarter gallon, right? That's about a quarter, uh, one liter is about a quarter gallon. And so, actually, this is 18,000 and a quarter gallon because I just dumped in a quarter gallon of chlorinating solution. But when I calculated my chlorine level, it was based on 18,000 gallon. And so I'm going to be a little bit <coughs> low. You know, if I thought, okay, I'm gonna nail it perfectly, I'm gonna get exactly 7% and I'm gonna nail this perfectly, you know that this is not the perfect answer because I need just a tiny bit more to chlorinate that extra or leave a little bit of chlorine in that chlorinating solution. You know, this is assuming that, does that make sense? Uh, really because I, I have to add that. Now, if the chlorinating solution were terribly dilute, let's say I was looking at not 7%, but let's say I was looking at 7 ppm chlorine. If I was looking at 7 ppm chlorine, in my chlorinating solution, then I'd be dumping in not a liter, I'd be dumping in many, many liters. And so if I have to dump in many, many liters, what I'm going to do is it screws up the, the volume. And so what we do is we make an assumption here. We assume that adding this does not change the pool volume. Significantly. So um, let, let's say, uh, let's say, the pool volume were one gallon, 
If the pool volume were one gallon, not that you'd have that small of a pool, and we need to add one liter of chlorinating solution, is that, is that a significant change or insignificant change? That's a significant change. Remember, well, what did I say? What was I talking about relative error? Did anybody catch that? Relative error? From last, last week? I was talking about 60 drops. Yeah, can somebody remind me of that? What were we talking about? The more drops, the less relative error. Yeah, like a one drop <laughs> error in 60. Yeah, it doesn't mean as much if, if it's like one drop error in, in two drops, you know, that would be huge, or one drop error in one drop. And so that's relative error. And so the same thing, if I made a one drop error in calculating my pool volume, is that significant or insignificant? Insignificant. insignificant. But if I made a one drop error in calculating my medi medicine, my dose of medicine was three drops, then that's, that's a pretty huge error, right? And so it's all relative. And so in this case, 0.9 liters, is that really significant compared to 18,000 gallons? No. So what we can do is we can kind of ignore this. We do that a lot in science. We ignore, otherwise the math is going to be more complicated. And so let me just say, otherwise, otherwise the math is more time consuming, more involved. And, um, and the answer might not be that much better. You know? So otherwise, math is more involved, but benefit, that is a more accurate answer, is not that great a benefit. Necessarily there. <laughs> All right, this is an advanced problem here. This is quite an advanced problem. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a uh, super advanced problem, and that is um, if the volume of chlorinating solution results in a significant change in pool volume, then we need to solve it differently. Is there an actual definition for a significant change? There is not. In Chem 1B, there is. Um, we say um, for certain math problems, it's 5%. For others, it's even lower. And so it depends on the problem and what you're doing. Some, some are much more um, tight, uh, much, much more strict than others. And so um, let's see. This is an aside. You don't have to know this. But what we do is we compensate for that volume. So we, what we do is we just go 18,000 gallons plus the volume of chlorinating solution, or B is volume. And so it's going to be 18,000 gallons plus a little bit of extra. But how much is that little bit of extra? Because we need a little bit more than this, right? And so how do we figure out how much? Well, we could take a quarter gallon and figure it out. But then, but then how do we get that? And so there are different ways of doing this. This would be this. This would be a multiple unknown problem. What do you need when you do multiple unknowns? You need, like if you have two unknowns, you need two equations, right? Have you done two, two unknown, two equation problems, x, y? Yeah? Yeah, I think everybody's done that. And so uh, but we're just doing it in a chemistry context. So 18,000, we need the volume of the chlorinating, but do we know the volume of the chlorinating solution? No, we don't know that. And so this is, this is one unknown, the total volume of the pool, including the chlorine, chlorinating solution. 
And so, um, well, what we do is we, we do it multiple, uh, well, this is one equation. The other equation is this. And so what we're gonna do is, this is gonna be in gallons here of um, chlorinating solution. And so what we do is this. We'll, we'll do this and we'll go from gallons to liters. And then um, liters of cool water to milliliters of cool water. Milliliters of cool water to grams of cool water. In this case, I'm going to put the cool on the outside. <coughs> to save time. All right, from um, grams of cool water to grams of chlorine. Grams of chlorine to grams of chlorinating solution. Then from grams of chlorinating solution to milliliters of chlorinating solution. Milliliters of chlorinating solution to what? Liters of chlorinating solution. Yeah, liters. And then liters of chlorinating solution to what? We don't want liters um, because what do we want the volume of in? Gallon. Gallon. And so what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to do an extra step here. We're going to go from liters to gallons, so 3.785 liters per gallon. And so what this is going to give me is the volume of the chlorinating solution in gallons. <coughs> And so this is what we call a two equation, two unknown problem. It's just I already did the substitution because over here, this is the volume of cool water, which is unknown. But the volume of cool water, we can relate to gallons of cool water plus <coughs> the volume or the gallons of chlorinating solution. And then we're solving for gallons of chlorinating solution. And so we just solve this. We use algebra and solve for V. And so I might as well do this um, and see if it comes out all that different because it's just going to be a tiny bit more uh, chlorinating solution. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all these numbers here. All the units are going to work out to gallons, so we can cancel all that. And so I'm going to just do this part here. And that is, it's going to be 3.785. And so I'm going to rewrite this 18,000 <laughs> plus B. Units are all going to be in gallons times, okay, now I'm going to multiply this out, 3.785 times 1,000 divided by 1,000, I'll ignore that, times 1 is the same thing, divided by a million, so I'll just say divided by a million times 100 divided by 7 divided by 1.1 divided by 3.785. So this comes out to um, point, what did I do, yeah, point zero, 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 quadruple zero, one, two, nine, eight, seven. So units are going to be in gallons. This is going to equal the volume of the chlorinating solution. 
So um, I'll do this times 18,000. That gives me 0.23376 plus 0. quadruple zero one two seven b is equal to b. Let's get rid of that. Okay, then I'm going to subtract this from both sides. And so I'll do um, one minus. So one minus point quadruple zero. Uh-huh. Where did the point two three three seven six come from? Eighteen thousand times this. Oh, okay. And then B times this is what got me here. And so I'm gonna subtract this from both sides. So um, one two one two nine eight seven. Point nine 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 four nines and eight seven B is equal to point two three three seven six. And so then solve for B. So I'm gonna invert this. I need to buy a new calculator. I don't know. Oh, here it is. Time mm -hmm. 0.233. Uh, this is just a lump. This is the calculator out of the drawer. Here. was I, I, I subtracted this from both sides, so this is one minus this, which gave me that. Okay. Well, I mean, the point of this is, doing all this extra algebra, did it give me a much better answer? Okay, now how many liters did I have to add? Um, or, I erased it, unfortunately, but how many was it? 0.885? Now it's 0.88. Well, was it five? Oh, no, it was 0.88. 8848. Okay, so if I if I ignored it, the change it was 0.8848. Huh. Was it 8848? Yes. <coughs> it's 8840 Oh, okay. Uh, this is just a little bit less, which it doesn't make sense. I'll have to double check this answer. But anyway, it's if we round it to the correct number of sig figs, which would be 0.9, then did it was it really worth doing all that extra work? And so let me tell you right now, in chemistry, we often do this. We'll often assume um, certain things because uh, it doesn't make a, a significant impact and makes the math easier. And so we'll often assume certain things. Like so for example, if somebody were to tell you this, you know, um, uh, if um, if you had an eighteen thousand gallon pool and and you're going to add some drops of water to that, and the person said, "Well, wait a minute, you know, if you're going to add water, I want to know how much water. You better keep track of how many drops you're adding and tell me what the volume of that is because I need to." make sure I know the total volume of the pool so I can do the correct calculation for the chlorine. <clears throat> and what would you say? Okay, well, I, I guess what I could do is I could get 60 drops of water and then measure its volume, you know, and then um, calculate it. And then you could have the proper volume for calculating the chlorine level. But does, does that make any difference? Did you say a few drops here, a few drops? No, it doesn't make any difference. So we often do this in chemistry. 
um, and, uh, you'll see examples of that. And so maybe, so this is a super advanced, uh, advanced problem. And so if this second part didn't make any sense, uh, don't worry about it. It's just, you know, sometimes I get math people, and math people say, you just calculated it wrong. And it's not correct. Well, you're right. It is calculated a little bit wrong, but it's close enough. It's close enough. <laughs> but if this, if this really didn't make any sense, this last part, you don't have to really struggle too much. But later on, you'll, you'll have to figure it out. But for right now, if you could do the first part, then you're good. Well, um, speaking of the first part, let's try another one then. <coughs> well, let's try number 71. Uh, actually, we can take a break and then try 71. Take a break. <laughs> 